true. At the top of the show, I, I mentioned that um, we wanted to do something around um, Firebase. So, um, uh, this is, I think we're on plan G now with the number of technical issues we've had. But so, how far we get through with this demo, I don't know. But um, uh, no, no, we didn't do any demo uh, on the thing. We, we were waiting for you. <laughs> um, well, so we'll see how. So this is just I. I put my hand up and say I haven't really used Firebase until mm, this morning. Um, so this is very much um, my ways of you know just using Firebase. Um, I did write something not too long ago about how you could do based on something um, real ed actually produced on how you can use Firebase for uh, a logger. Um, but this this example is looking at how you can just simply uh, read and write data to Firebase. So First thing to highlight, Firebase is not just a database. There's a whole list of um, services. And um, in the, the show we do next time, we're going to do uh, cloud functions for Firebase. So that's another feature. Spencer Easton has done uh, cloud um, uh, Firebase hosting. So this is just another feature of Firebase. Um, so in terms of the database, it's uh, uh, if you come from um, or use script DB back in the day, which is now no longer with us. It, Firebase databases are the same sort of format. They're um, um, NoSQL uh, based, so they don't have a formal structure. Um, so there, it, you know, if you've got problems that fit that um, kind of uh, uh, gap, then uh, Firebase is, is worth looking at. In terms of my cribbing, I did uh, this morning. Um, I basically used Remain's got a wonderful tutorial on Firebase, so I just basically went through that, and I borrowed um, stuff from Bruce. So Bruce had a um, uh, Bruce has been using um, an abstraction DB uh, service where you can plant in lots of different databases in. Um, so we'll share a link to the slides after the show, so you can go through this uh, yourselves. Uh, to show you the process, because um, there are some with any interface, uh, it can be problematic sometimes finding where things are. Um, so I'm just going to um, uh, share my screen. So hopefully you can see. So this is just um, the Firebase um, uh, console. Um, so before we get started, we're, we're just going to create uh, a new project. So the quote is on Firebase are. Uh, very flexible. So um, I've got a slide at the end that's got these. So um, basically, they have a free program. So we're just going to, sorry, it helps if you click on the right screen. We're just going to create a, a project here. So the the project name you give will, will basically be uh, form part of the, um, the URLs that we use later on. So I'm just going to create a project. Um, so Firebase is going off and setting up everything that we need, and uh, uh, basically now the project's created. So you can see uh, immediately we've got all the other Firebase um, tools here, but the one we're interested in is the the database. So in terms of what we want to do in the next steps um, now that we've created the the database is in this uh, demonstration. I'm just gonna. Um, I want to um, grab a couple of bits of information. So um, the first bit is the URL. So this is when you're um, making calls to the to the Firebase. Um, you you include a URL. So that's included for us here. So I'm just gonna put uh, in as a, a variable for our script project. So. Uh, let's just go back. Uh, I can paste code later on. So um, the next thing we need is um, a secret. So this will allow us to write um, data to um, our database uh, from app script. So in Remain's example, we actually um, allowed to uh, set the, the database to a, an open write mode. But um, I'm just going to show you 
where to get the secret because it's not entirely straightforward. So the secret is just a, an access key to get this. You need to go into the cog um, on your project, go into project settings, and we need to go into service accounts. And you'll see in here there is a database secret. <coughs> if I just click on show. So uh, my first question to remain is that this warning here, database secrets are currently deprecated. So um, how, how is that going to impact this flow in future? Uh, do, do you need to do an, um, an OAuth flow or will these secrets always be available to use in your projects? Uh, so it won't be an OAuth flow. Uh, in fact, uh, so these uh, both secrets are now uh, in a, a service accounts uh, part uh, of the uh, UI. Uh, and so you can uh, replace uh, these uh, simple secrets, uh, simple uh, string, not very l uh, long, uh, uh, by a, uh, like a more complex uh, string. And so uh, if you create a new service account, uh, Google will uh, give you uh, an email address specific to this uh, service account, uh, plus uh, I don't uh, uh, like a, a, a very more complex key uh, that you will also be able to uh, enter in the database uh, in the information uh, to to connect. Uh, the the thing is, uh, at the moment, uh, in uh, my documentation, in the tutorial, and so on, we are uh, still uh, promoting the use of the old uh, secret keys, uh, simply because they are a bit uh, faster to set up, and yeah. also because uh, it won't. Even if uh, Google has indicated that it's deprecated, it's uh, mainly because it's not as strong of, of a security uh, as the use of uh, real service accounts. Uh, for me, as uh, long as uh, uh, Firebase DB uh, exists like it is today, uh, secrets will also exist like they exist today. Okay. Um, so, uh, that, I think good news. So given how easy it is to grab that. So, and I've just pasted it in the code. So, uh, the next bit is there, there is no, uh, advanced service or service within app script for, um, Firebase. So we have to load the library for it. So as, um, uh, Rumi mentioned, this is something that they've put to get, uh, he's put together with Spencer. So, um, from uh remains website you'll get the the id for the for the library and we're just going to select the latest version so what that then allows us to do so um we will have the the autocomplete for firebase and you can see um basically the first thing to do is to to get the, the database by url um so the url we can we just set up as a variable and the secret we've set up as a variable so I'm just going to set this as a variable e equals we've got now got uh, the, the set of functions that we can use um, now that we've got access to the database is I'm just going to drop in some pre-prepared data uh, in remains example we just pulled out um, some spreadsheet data so this can be, you know, a form submit, wherever you want. So in terms of setting the data, this is really straightforward. So um, we can just drop in this line. So um, we're calling this set data. The first um, variable is a, is a path. Um, so if you want to specify a path in the, in the data, you can. And then you can just send in the data. So if I run this, we'll get prompted by our new authentication flow so it's going to ask me to select the account and because we're um, the firebase app will be using URL fetch we're connecting to an external service so this is running away and then 
drop this in. So when we go into the database, uh, we can see that it's put all the countries in. So it's basically dropped those objects in. And it's quite nice the fact that we've got uh, a browser here um, to look at the data. So we can uh, see the structure of the data. We can see the data is in there correctly. Uh, so we're using uh, a set data command there. There's another command just to highlight called push data. So um, this caused a bit of um, issues for me when I was uh, learning this this morning because I was trying to push data in. So if we run this, what push data does is actually uh, put the data in and generate uh, an automatic key for this. So um, this could be useful in other situations where you, you want to have, uh, you know, storage and you want a random key uh, assigned to it. You can see the data is actually um, structured within that key. Um, with the push data command, you'll, you'll basically get that key back. So you could uh, store it as a variable. Uh, there's another option within uh, setting data to actually uh, um, update the data. There's um, an update data command as well if you want to just um, update part of a record. Um, so in this case, I'm going to change the fact that the uh, England region, which was set to Europe, uh, uh, given what's happening currently, uh, we're going to change it to to UK. So again, when I jump back into the database, we can see this is now set to UK. So it's all very straightforward. The last bit is uh, a bit more uh, set required. So now we say you've got a ton of data in your database and you want to query back uh, a certain part of it. So there's a couple of steps that you need to do. So the first step is um, you need to tell uh, Firebase what you're going to index the data on. So within the rules, uh, when you look at uh, Remain's example, you, it shows you how you can use these rules um, for setting up different write access um, and read access. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to say index. So uh, the thing that was foxing me this morning was that the dots are important. Um, so it doesn't give the most um, meaningful error message. So uh, if you haven't got the dot, you're going to be in problems. Uh, so that rule is now published. And what that means is we can now uh, query the data based on uh, some of the object properties. What I'm going to do is query the data um, on when uh, the region is equal to North America. Um, so if I just run that, and if I go into the logs, um, so we can see in here, it, it's pulled back the two records where it, it's North America. So this is my next question for you, Remain. So my understanding was that it's quite limited in terms of how you can query. So to specify that we're querying uh, records equal to North America, we have to specify order by is the region. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, every time uh, you uh, want to do a, a, a query uh, to try to get a, 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 a specific uh, uh, key value pair. Uh, you you need to have uh, at least uh, two uh, two parameters uh, in your query. Uh, so in this example, for example, uh, yeah, order by and equal to. Uh, I haven't uh, sorry, uh, I haven't followed it. In this case, it, it did work or not? Yep. So it, it, okay. it pulled pulled back just so there was a. If I just comment out that one, so. Uh, just to make it a bit easier to see. So it, it pulled back. Yeah. A bit. Uh, so 
Yeah, the the query part of uh, Firebase is uh, uh, pretty uh, limited, uh, especially when you uh, you start to have a, a very big database. Uh, because if you have a very big database, uh, it's uh, it's it will take too much time to uh, actually uh, run a query uh, across a, a large part of your database. Um, so, uh, in my experience, uh, but uh, again, it's uh, mostly because uh, we are uh, we have big uh, Firebase databases uh, uh, for uh, user management, for example, uh, the database is more than uh, 1.7 uh, gigabytes. So it's kind of a big JSON. Uh, and uh, uh, on this database, I can't really use uh, queries. Uh, so uh, instead, uh, I uh, used um, uh, what is um, uh, sorry? I for, uh, I'm denormalizing the data, uh, meaning that, uh, for example, uh, I will have uh, uh, part of my DB with uh, all the countries, and another part of the DB uh, with uh, all the regions. Uh, and so, if I want to uh, get information uh, on the uh, specific uh, region, I will directly uh, look uh, at the information in the region pass and uh, not uh, in the uh, country parts of the DB. I would just, <laughs> just, what, just, just, just to add to what, what Romain said, um, the thing about Firebase, it's not like a regular database where you, where the main way to access it is via queries. The main way to access it is via a path. So in, in, if you look back at your example where you had uh, regions and all the rest of it, the path that you would look at would be as far down as you could go to partition the data into a small amount. So it's a little bit different than that. And that's why I know that you, those of us that are used to databases are used to normalizing databases where you get rid of duplication and all of that you can, um, you know, you've got lots of links and so on and so forth. The Firebase is not like that. You have duplication so that you can um, order things in the way that you're likely want to want to be able to access it. But having said all of that, if you do that, it's very, very fast. If you do queries where it's got to look at the whole thing, it's kind of slow. And uh, when I need to uh, really analyze uh, all the data in the database, I actually uh, do a backup. Uh, so I download. Uh, a very big JSON file, uh, and I do my queries uh, on this uh, local copy uh, of the DB uh, rather than uh, uh, actually uh, on the uh, real uh, uh, Firebase DB, uh, because uh, if I was doing uh, the queries I'm doing uh, in this specific case, uh, the database would uh, go down for a while for uh, all the other users, and that's that's something I want to open. To open. I'll just conclude by saying so the quote is on the free. So you you allowed uh, 100 simultaneous connections. You allowed a gig of storage and 10 gigabyte a month uh, on the databases. So there's lots potentially to play with.